In this example, we want to find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum of the function of x equals to x all divided by x squared minus x plus 25 on the interval from 0 to 15. Okay, so we're only going to look, uh, we're only going to find these, uh, find the maximum min uh, with respect to this interval, okay, where the interval is given from 0 to 15. Okay, so um, the first step that we want to do is find our critical numbers, okay? Okay, so we have a function, uh, a continuous, we have a function, um, in this case it's, it, it's a continuous function and it's on a closed interval from 0 to 15. Okay, so that means the, uh, the max and minimum values will, they will either occur at the boundary points or at the critical numbers. Okay, so to find the critical numbers, remember that we need to set the derivative of the function equal to zero. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, in this case, we need to go ahead and apply the quotient rule since our function is uh, a rational function. Okay, so we're going to have f prime of x, so the derivative of f with respect to x. So we're going to have the derivative of the top okay, times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom. times the top. And all this is going to be divided by the denominator squared. So we're going to have x squared minus x plus 25 squared. Okay. So this is going to give us, okay, we have the derivative of x which is just 1, so that's going to have x squared minus x plus 25 minus the derivative of x squared minus x plus 25 will be, this is going to give us 2x minus 1 times x. And all this is divided by x squared minus x plus 25 squared. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify this and then, um, and then solve for our critical numbers. Okay, so looking in the uh, looking in the numerator, okay, uh, we can simplify this. Uh, this is going to be uh, we have x squared minus x plus twenty five minus. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the negative, so we have minus two x squared. Okay, so just distributing the x here. So we have minus 2x squared and then plus x. And all that's divided by x squared minus x plus 25 squared. Okay, so we're going to get, uh, let's see, minus x squared. Okay. Minus x squared plus 25, okay, all divided by x squared minus x plus 25 squared, okay? All right, so that is our, that's the first derivative, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and set that equal to zero. So when we set this equal to zero, okay, Again, we just need to look in the numerator, okay? So that's going to give us, okay, let's go down here. So that's going to give us minus x squared plus 25 equal to 0, which is equivalent to x squared equals, 20, equals to 25, and that will give us x equals to plus or minus 5, okay? All right, so there's our critical numbers. However, we're only 
interested in we're only interested in uh, looking between 0 and 15 okay so we just need to so we're just going to have a critical number of 5 here okay okay so we're just going to look at x equals to 5 Right. So negative 5, again, negative 5 is not in the interval between 0 and 15, so that's why we look at 5, okay? All right. Okay, let me move this down. Okay, so the next step is to evaluate, okay, we want to evaluate the critical numbers at our function and the boundary points, okay? and the boundary points. In this case, our critical number our critical number is five and our boundary points are zero and fifteen. Okay. Alright, so we're gonna have F of zero. Okay. So remember our function is Right, it's x over x squared minus x plus 25. Okay. Okay, so f of 0, uh, obviously that's going to give us 0. We plug in 0, we're going to get 0 in the numerator, divided by 25, so that gives us 0. Uh, and then let's go ahead and evaluate the function at 5. Okay, so we're going to have 5 over. 5 squared minus 5 plus 25. Okay, and that's going to give us, when we simplify this, okay, we're going to get um, 1 ninth, okay. So, right, because we have, to, we have this value of, so we have 5 over, Just check my work here. Okay, we have five. Yep. Yeah. So that's going to give us one ninth. Okay. After we reduce it. Okay. And then for the next one, we have f of 15. Okay. So we have 15 divided by 15 squared minus 15 plus 25. Okay. And so we end up getting 15 over 235, and that reduces to 3 over 47. Okay. Okay. So we should also look at the denominator of our derivative, okay, to see if we're dividing by any uh, any possible zero here. Okay, so looking at this, okay, looking at this part here. Okay. Um, it turns out that there is no x value that will make that zero. Okay. The reason is because if we look at the discriminant of this. Okay. So this is a quadratic, right? And so the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Okay. Where b is negative 1 and a is 1 and c is 25. Okay, so this gives us a value of minus 99, and that is less than zero. So, if you have, if the discriminant is, is less than zero, that tells us that we have, um, there, this function will not cross the x-axis. Okay, so there's no roots, there's no real roots for this function. Okay, so therefore, there is no x value that makes this zero. Okay. All right, so the only critical number we have is five, okay? All right, so now from here, we're gonna compare, right? So then that's the third step, is that we need to compare the y values, right? Okay, 
Okay. So we choose the, so the, the smallest number will be the absolute minimum, the largest number, the largest y value will be the absolute maximum. Okay. All right, so we have at, right, at f of zero, we had zero. So this is our, this is going to be the minimum. Okay. Okay. And here we have one night. One night is bigger than three over seven, so that is an absolute maximum. Okay. Okay, again, so this is right, so this is an absolute so we have an absolute minimum at zero. Okay. Okay, so there's one at zero, zero, and an absolute max maximum at occurring at x equals to five. So, and the y value for that was one night. Okay. All right. All right, so to the left of or to the right of this, we have our we have the graph. Right, so this is this is x, this is y. So here's the graph of the given function. Okay, so you can see um, looking between zero and fifteen. Okay. Okay, so looking between zero and fifteen, we can see that there's an absolute minimum here, and at the value of five, okay, which is about here, okay, we get right, we had five and one ninth. Okay, here was just the origin. Okay, so at that point, at the origin, we have a minimum, the absolute minimum on this interval, and at five, we have an absolute maximum. Okay, so that's the solution for this problem. Okay, so again, we have absolute minimum at the origin and absolute maximum at five and one ninth. Okay.